Welcome back. It is uh, week six or week seven. It's, it's I, I say that every time, but oh, I forget six. about zero week. It's, it's I mean, it's officially it's week six, but there was the zero week. And, and I'm and then also we've been doing we did the summer show. So it's actually week seven of the Carla and Crappy no, show. It is, it is officially week six because okay. week zero um, is not. Like, a, do you really a, want to make Illinois and Nebraska be the thing that counts? Do you really want that? <laughs> here's a, well and this this illustrates my point um um it's the carly crappy show uh whatever week it is uh we are in i think the third week of the uh the jeopardy guest hosting round um and and what i just did in my confusion about what week it is is a great illustration of what happened this week um i realized this morning that i i don't know how to work a calendar so I'm like, oh wait, I don't have a guest host for this week. So I, I send I send AJ a text message. Um, AJ, who has already sent me his his segment uh, for the show, and I'm like, okay, look, I I'm I need I need a guest host. I can't I, doing this by myself would be painfully dull. Um, and AJ, who is also going to be hosting guest hosting next week. This yeah, is I'll be back next week. It's fine. You're like you're like the Ken Jennings. Yeah, absolutely. The, I'm the, always yeah. here. Generally right. It's fine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I've, made I've made hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars <laughs> off of stupid information. So, sure. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, AJ, um, who was our officially scheduled guest host for next week, is also our guest host this week. And, uh, and dude, I really I really do appreciate it. Um at next at next week's show we're going to be more in your elements um because there was some there was some fun g5 com stuff coming up and as i looked at the schedule i thought okay this is this is the one that makes sense for for aj to 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 be the to be the co-host but um as we know aj is is a well-rounded college football fan um and and uh we're gonna we're gonna get through this one just fine um starting we'll be with, okay we, no, we're no, adults. Be, we've be, done this before. Be, we've we've done this a few times before. Um, to start with, oh, uh, what what's what is the uh, what is the one thing the best thing that you saw last weekend as you watched well into the evening? Yeah, <laughs> and I, games, so, football games in Honolulu and all that stuff. So yes, uh, my my beloved Rainbow Warriors mm -hmm. uh, pulling out a W against Jake Hayner and the Fresno yeah. State Bulldogs. Yeah. Um, again, we've talked about this in in my segment a couple times. I don't understand why Fresno State has to just go. Let's take it to the end. Like I, it's either that or they're just like the val. <laughs> they just really want to make sure that everybody gets their money's worth. That like mm -hmm. the game's not over in the third quarter mm -hmm. so they always take it to the end because they were up 24 10 at one point it looked like they were going to cruise to a w and then arizona state came back scored two quick touchdowns and it was like oh now it's spicy right um so yeah it was uh actually this also featured one of uh, a weird thing that happened at the very very end so uh Hawaii, fresno's driving trying to get uh trying to score a touchdown mm -hmm. to win the game and Hayner gets picked off on like the two yard line guy falls down immediately. Like we need uh, to collect the ball, but this means that they can't do the victory formation because they will be uh, taking right, a knee right, in right, the right. end zone and yeah. then giving the ball back. So it led to this like really weird finish where instead of doing the victory formation, it was just one yard in a cloud of dust multiple times. <laughs> It was the most that's aggressive a, victory formation. That's, I've ever the, that's seen. their audition to join the Big Ten. That, that's what that was. Uh, 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 well, I mean, yeah, they could join the Big The Big Ten West gets very West, is what right. happens there. Right. Right. Oh, my God. Imagine, imagine Northwestern Hawaii. Ugh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I i have to give i have to give a shout out to bonix because he is since he's been a freshman uh, uh carl and i have been have been fascinated by this guy i think it was his name that that got my attention initially um we we beat him up a little bit um but not as much as he gets beaten up on the field uh or by his own fan base um but i i did manage i, I did not stay up like hawaii late 
I stayed up um, LSU home game late last week. You stayed up. You stayed up late game at Death Valley. That game kicked I, off yeah, at 9 I know, p.m. I'm I know. I know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> uh, and and I got to say, Bo Nix uh, still inconsistent. Um, but he he pulled that out last weekend. Uh, and there was one play in particular. I think third quarter. Uh, he is scrambling. Rolls to his left. I mean, he's like he's like sprinting. At the sideline, he's got he's got uh, two LSU linebackers in his face, um, and just hurls this thing uh, thirty five yards straight down the sideline. Finds a receiver in the end zone for a touchdown. It is a, it was a, a, a terrific play, um, and, and it's it's, it's got to be a little frustrating for Auburn fans. Just like why can't you do that all the time? Um, no, no, no. It's but, it's here's the thing. It is J- Bonix. Yes, is the um, he is he is the the literal double edged sword. Yeah. Yes. Right? Absolutely. He is going to be. He can be devastating. Mm-hmm. But that blade may also come back and hit you square in the face. <laughs> and it and has, he may get benched. And, and, and he may get benched against Georgia State. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Listen, you just got to ride this ride, uh-huh. and whatever happens may happen. You don't have a choice in this matter, Auburn fans. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes you're going to beat all you on the road. And sometimes uh, it's you're you're gonna look pretty gross at Penn State. It's, you're gonna look. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna look. No, you're gonna look gross at home against Georgia State. I'm not. Well, even yeah, there's Penn that. State on the table. <laughs> you're gonna look gross on homecoming against Georgia State. One, these two things are completely. All things are possible with Bonex. The entire space time yeah. continuum. All. All realities are possible, I think, is what we've come to. Here. And 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 we saw it, and I want to give a shout out to Bo Nix because we saw the mostly good Bo Nix uh, in, in Death Valley on Saturday night. So, um, AJ, I, I have a question for you, and this is something I've been thinking about. Um, last week's show was kind of about uh, big showdown games. Um, who's going to show up? Who's not? Who's for real? Who's not? Alabama, Georgia, Cincinnati, and Michigan uh, all had impressive wins, impressive-ish wins, I guess. Um, for whom did, did the win on Saturday mean the most for, for those four teams, Alabama, Georgia, Cincinnati, or Michigan? Um, I'm going to say Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. I, I am a G5 homer, but in particular, mm-hmm. it was a deep validation. Yeah. Um, not like Alabama beating Arkansas or no Georgia beat Arkansas, Alabama, right. Wampin Old Miss, Georgia, mm-hmm. Wampin Arkansas. Like, yes. okay. Those are relatively expected. I mean, Georgia was like a two touchdown favorite in that game. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Alabama was a two touchdown, almost three touchdown favorite over Old Miss. Cincinnati, a G five team mm-hmm. that does not have Notre Dame's budget that does not have Notre Dame's TV contract, that does not have Power 5 money. Because here's the thing. That if you go look at the actual financials of G5 athletics, even a yeah. school as good as Cincinnati is mm-hmm. and as good as Coastal Carolina is, those schools don't have huge budgets to go do all the things that Alabama does where they have like 50 analysts on staff. They just don't yes. have that money, right? Yeah. So Cincinnati going in and dominating you, Notre Dame, Mm-hmm. Like that game was not Notre Dame's game. That was Cincinnati's game to then it go was. lose. It, it was. Uh, Notre Dame did its 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 goofy Notre Dame thing. Started to like in the third quarter, and yeah. and Cincinnati put the kibosh on that immediately. Um, yeah, I, I, they, they they there was not going to be a comeback for the Irish. And I think that is that to me means more because one. The college football playoff wants Notre Dame to be in the playoff in the worst way possible because Always. they're all based Always. in like 1950s football. <sighs> so there is that. Yes. But this validates Cincinnati on a national stage. Mm-hmm. It validates Luke Fickle as a program builder. Yes. It validates that they can go play with pretty much anybody. And also, I just want to deeply thank the fine folks on the Cincinnati football team for putting an end to, well, Notre Dame's undefeated. They should go to the playoffs. Blah, blah, blah. blah thank blah, you. Blah, yes, yes. They are one uh, loss and it's over. Thank you. Is, is that, is, is that, if, if, if you see, my, my answer to this question is yes. I don't know what you say. If you see wins out, uh, wins conference title, is that is that going to get them in the playoff? I think so. I think here's what it's going to come down to. Mm-hmm. Georgia and Alabama right now 
the only challenge that is left on Georgia's schedule is Florida, mm-hmm. right? And, and the cocktail party is going to be a blast this year because we literally don't know what Florida team is going to show up. Right. And that game can be we'll real. Get, we'll dumb. get to that one. Yes. There's been, yeah, that's, that's, that's later this month. Look, look for the stupid boys and girls. Well, <laughs> listen, that game is the stupid every year. There's, yes. there's no rhyme or reason to how that game works. So that game can break Georgia's schedule. Mm-hmm. Other than Florida, no one is touching Georgia before mm-hmm. Alabama in the sec title game yeah and nobody yeah. in the west is coming for alabama like in previous years with lsu and auburn and so on and so forth yeah. alabama yeah. is at full death mode right now so they will play each other in the sec title game i can absolutely see them going into the playoff as like a one three mm-hmm. situation mm-hmm. where there's not a rematch in the first round mm-hmm. and then the two of them playing again for the national title and this is just we're all just playing a hundred million games just for the sake of having <laughs> just, tv content right? it's, it's fun let's go let's go but, play some football but i could see i could see the acc not getting a team in this year right the pac-12 isn't getting a team in this year no so what's left you've got a five and zero oklahoma who looks shaky as heck and yes. has looked shaky as heck all year yes you have the big 10 which could potentially shoot itself in the foot mm-hmm. you've got mm-hmm. i mean you've got penn state iowa and a one loss oregon or a one loss ohio state team yeah right yep. michigan i they're fine they're not getting I don't see the them. They're not getting them. through. They're not getting through Penn State. They're not getting through. They're not getting through Penn State, and they're not getting through Ohio State. They're just yeah. not right. So the Penn State Ohio State game is basically for the Big Ten East, as it pretty much is every year. Mm-hmm. And then you've got Iowa, who is in. We have a talk to your kids about an undefeated Iowa year again. <laughs> right. So, I gotta find. I gotta find that video again. That was so good. Right. Shout out to the solid verbal, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Um, but this is a. This is one of those years where I could see the Big Ten champion getting in. I don't mm-hmm. see two Big Ten teams getting in. No, no. I, I see so. Georgia and Alabama getting in pretty much regardless of what happens in the SEC championship game, mm-hmm. which leaves this open spot yep. that where Oklahoma might mess around and lose to Texas. They might we'll get mess to around and lose to uh, – I don't think they play K-State. They played they play K-State already. But yeah. – there's a couple opportunities for the Big 12 to eat itself, too. Mm-hmm. I think Cincinnati has a legitimate shot and has a, a win on their resume if Notre Dame wins out mm-hmm. to be able to say, hey, we want them in their house. Yeah. Yeah. And we deserve to be in the playoff. And they could legitimately make a case to be the first G5 team in the playoff. I I mean, I, as I said, it, as I was asking the question, um, I, 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 who knows what will actually happen um, if they are uh, if they went out and win their conference title game um, I think they're deserving I mean the the, the resume yeah. so far I, I know the rest of the schedule is kind of eh. um, the rest and, of the schedule they're not, is not, they're not, it's not even eh. they're it not is, well, they're not getting any help they're not getting any help no. from um, uh, from their conference mates uh, as it stands right now um, but I, 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 I think that's, I, man, that's got, that's gotta be enough. Um, I mean, I would, Cincinnati's I would... got, let me run through the rest of Cincinnati schedule here. Yeah. Temple mm-hmm. on Thursday, mm-hmm. UCF, Navy, Tulane, Tulsa, USF, SMU, and then ECU. Like the only team on this schedule that might could put some pain in their heart is Tulane, Tulsa, they get Tulsa at home, and then they get SMU at home. There's a, there's a potential here. Like all of the big name games that they have left on their schedule are all home mm-hmm. games, with Tulsa, the exception of Tulane. Tulsa's awesome. Tulsa's, by, at home. Tulsa's awesome, by the way. You're so you're, much. I know it's so much better than than their record would indicate. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and say that they're holding a they're holding an FCS loss. Okay. And, yes. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> and just got and just lost by 35 to Houston. Uh, it, it, yeah, Houston's uh, you know, it's good offense. Dana knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, all, all that five star talent. Anyway, huh? anyway I, 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 the rest of the rest of UC schedule is is rough, um, and they're not getting help. You know, in in 
in in the recent past there there would be a couple more games uh in in that run that that would be that would be worth a look um if there if there is uh a year for a g5 team to to break into that into the final four um i i think it's got to be the bearcats if they if they if they finish the deal um they, they got to be in um i i i did i had one more question for you about last week before we move forward um I, I I can't help but think if Georgia had a, a, an elite quarterback, they would be the number one team in the country. Um, I, I think the defense is that good, um, and I and, I've, and, we, and Carl and I have talked about this the last the last several years. I mean, uh, 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 Jake Fromm, his senior year was bleh. Uh, Stetson Bennett, his story's great, but he's not his, his quarterbacking is not. J T. Daniels, eh. uh, I mean, what? It, it, what would what would how many how many national championships would Georgia have won in the last few years if Justin Fields had stayed? Would you, I, it does, one? Okay, one. Okay. I think they win. They they potentially win the Bama year where they took it where Bama took them to overtime and won the two mm-hmm. a year. Mm-hmm. They potentially get a little bit further in the year after that when they lost from and then they had like no quarterback for most of the year yeah i think the problem with georgia is that they are coached by kirby smart and kirby is trying to emulate like 2011 bama he is emulate he is going for blake sims era alabama we are going to play absolute monster defense you are not scoring points and, on us and he's and our offense that. has to Right. And our offense has to just do enough Mm -hmm. to go win games, right? They beat South Carolina 40 to 13. They beat Arkansas 37, nothing. Like Mm -hmm. I could see them just doing these like 35, 37, 42, nothing games for the rest of the year. Right. I mean, I don't think they particularly have anybody on the team that's on offense going to do anything terribly well. I mean, Stetson Bennett and JT Daniels are, are, like neck and neck yardage wise, mm-hmm. they are Stetson Bennett has a higher, uh, higher rating, but he's also only thrown the ball 41 times. They have yeah, good they, running um, backs, but they're, they they're purposely not, did they not want Bennett to throw the ball. Like mean, he, he had like, uh, did he have 10 attempts last weekend? Maybe. I, I'm 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 not uh, even sure that, that he got that that many. Eleven. He had eleven. Okay. He was okay. seven for eleven for yeah. twelve or for seventy two yards. Like Georgia's like, listen, they won 37, nothing and had 345 yards of offense, but it was 273 yards on the ground. They literally (laughs) handed the ball off 56 times. Yeah. 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 It was, you might as well have said, in fact, this stat line is an army stat line, Uh, air force stat line. (laughs) Okay. Yes. Right. They ran the ball 56 times. They threw the ball 11 times. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. an air force stat line. In fact, let's, let's play a game. We're going to play a game. I'm going to go find the Air Force go, game from go do last it. week. Go do it. Uh, let's see. And we're going to go down here to the bottom because Air Force played. Where did Air Force play? Where are you, Air Force? You're in the sky. Um, no, that's, that's Space Air. Force. That's there we Space go. Force. Uh, Air's, Air Force won 38 to 10. Mm-hmm. Air Force had 33 yards passing, one of two, and four. 408 yards on the ground with 73 <laughs> rushing attempts. <laughs> it's the same thing. Oh, that's awesome. It really is. Right? It really is. Georgia run, the, Georgia run the option. Just run the option. Just make Nick Saban so incredibly mad that you have five-star talent running the option. Just do that. That's that's <laughs> actually, that's that's a good solution. Um, and probably easier than than trying to, you know, recruit five-star quarterbacks, um, which I'm sure Kirby could do. I just, I, I, my, my point with that, with that, with that very leading question, um, is that as, as good as Georgia's defense has been, um, especially this season, and I think they, they're, it has taken a step up this season uh, to something that's just stratospheric. Um, if they had an elite quarterback to to go with everything else, um, they they are like. Uh, Death Star, New York Yankees, Evil Empire, unbeatable. Um, so they would be emulating 2020 Bama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
2019, 2020 Bama is what they would be emulating. They would just be uh, moving the year that they would be emulating. <laughs> yeah. I, but, I mean, this is this is famously what Saban said after, I think it was one of the Ole Miss losses, one of the Chad mm-hmm. Kelly losses. Mm-hmm. And he literally looks out at the press conference and says, is this, is this what we want football to be? Is this what we want? <laughs> and then that was that wasn't him. That wasn't a question. Yeah, that was a warning. Mm-hmm. And then he goes out and then does Lane Kiffin yes. and installs the Death Star offense and lets Lane go recruit five star quarterbacks. And now all these kids who have been watching Bama score 70 points a year. He's now getting Bryce Young out of California. Bryce Young should be a USC quarterback. Mm-hmm. But he's not because no one knows who Clay Helton is. And so Saban walks in and goes, hey, son, you want to play for Bama? And this kid goes, hell yeah, I want to play for Bama <laughs> and leaves California to go to yes, Tuscaloosa. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, you're pulling, right. You're right. Right. So all of these big schools are now going like Bama, mm-hmm. which has previously been a run the ball, play good defense, yes. throw the ball when you have to sort of offense. And now they're focusing on getting five-star quarterbacks mm-hmm. to run a fairly high-powered offense. They're getting five. When was the last time you could – when was – think about this. Bama had two different receivers up for the Heisman last year. I, yes. Yeah. And that's, right? that, that, that tells you everything you need to know, actually. Like, I, 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 that is the shift. Mm-hmm. So, it's, to me, if Georgia wants to play in a modern football world, they need to emulate new Bama, not old Bama. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, again, that's my point. Um, and, and I think if, if they had a quarterback like that uh, at this point, um, yeah, given all the other variables and everything else that's happened this season, I, 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 they, they'd be number one. And, and, and Alabama would be looking up at him. Um, I don't know why Kirby doesn't do that, but – Maybe because maybe... Kirby hasn't updated his haircut since 1978. That's why. Well, yeah, he, dude, is it? He's a just he just seems like a super old school dude. Even he does. He's, not. he's fairly young. <laughs> um, it's it with Kirby. It is very much a this is what I know works. He's mm-hmm. always been a defensive side of the ball guy. And right. I could see him wanting to protect his defense mm-hmm. with an offense that is built to sustain long drives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the problems of. The, the spread, you know, style and all of the various newer, more modern offenses that are more pass heavy is that they can put your defense on the field more often, both in terms of yes. three and outs and also scoring drives the last a minute and 40 seconds. Yes. Yes. Go back last year, by the way, if you ever want to just watch your brain melt out of your ears, go look at the play, go look at the play chart from Ole Miss Bama last year where you had 21 okay. possessions and I'm not including the two times that Ole Miss had the ball to end a half in, in the game. Mm-hmm. There's 21 possessions. The longest drive of the game was the six minute drive from Ole Miss. Okay. Bama meanwhile was clearing two, three, four minute scoring drives. Mm-hmm. There was 700 yards of offense for Bama. There was 650 yards of offense from Ole Miss. It is absolutely ludicrous speed football. Mm -hmm. which means that both defenses are on the field a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that sort of rotation of, you know, we're going to be out on the field. If this is one of the big problems, this is why big 12 defenses always get the bad rap that they do. It's because their offenses score so quickly that they're back on the field on another six minute long defensive push. And then they get on the bench, they get to sit there for a minute and a half, and then they have to get back out on the field. They're tired by the end of the game. Those guys Mm -hmm. are exhausted. So has, has Nick Saban solved that problem with, with defensive depth? Is he, yeah, is he doing that better also, than anybody else? Yeah. Cause he's Nick Saban and he's recruited four and five. He's got four stars. This is too deep. Like he's probably, he's probably ready course. to go, go play DB by himself. He's, he's ready to, I don't know if he has any eligibility left. Uh, one he, of the funniest videos on the internet is go f- There's a video where he watches a pick six and he's mad at it. <laughs> he's doing, it was like one of those like coaches shows. Yes, it's like the, I think it's the Nick Saban coaches show, and he's on. He's got like the whiteboard TV thing, and mm-hmm. he's like, "All right, now down here, we're doing mass cut, we're doing mesh coverage with matching." And I'm like, "Buddy, you might as well be telling me how to move a space station." I don't know, but he's <laughs> like, "We're watching this coverage." He's like, "This guy's going to come down here. He's going to get this pig. He's going to take it to the house." What he was supposed to do, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "Sometime, <laughs> sometime, I'm going to chill." 
I'm gonna because it they they have to exist. There have to be uh, uh, episodes of of the old Woody Hayes Sunday morning show um, on the internet somewhere, and I'm gonna dig them up and I'm gonna let you watch because it's 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 not even that. It's just uh, Woody Hayes is smoking on TV for that show. By the way, you know yeah, that, right? I'm sure. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Um, we spent a fair amount of time on last weekend. Uh, next up, uh, our friend AJ. <laughs> our friend AJ is going to tell us about this week's action in the uh, Group Five, um, Pac-12, whatever else he feel likes talking about after dark, which may or may not be after dark. Report, AJ. We're going to throw it to AJ. AJ. Hello, everyone. It is your pal AJ here with your Week Six Group of Five, Pac-12, whatever games I find interesting after dark report. Uh, on Thursday, we start with Houston Houston at Tulane. Um, this could be potentially interesting. Tulane, I, I don't know what happened. Tulane looked great against Oklahoma, and then they got sent to the Phantom Zone by Ole Miss, and ever since then, they've been just butt. I don't understand it. Houston's looked really solid. Um, this might be a two lane bounce back game. Who's to say? Uh, also, Coastal Carolina is playing that night. You should just put your eyes on Coastal Carolina. They're great. They have possibly one of the future offenses of college football with a two back option set. Um, Jamie Chadwell is going to get hired somewhere. You should probably keep an eye on him before he goes on to some bigger job. Friday. 10.30 p.m., Stanford at Arizona State. Stanford gets the huge upset, somewhat controversially. Maybe the refs had a little money on the table. Who's to say? Uh, they got some uh, generous calls uh, towards the end of their game against Oregon. Um, but they managed to pull it out. Oregon could not bounce back, uh, so they get the upset of Oregon at home. And now they get to go to Tucson. ASU is on a roll in the Pac-12. They're coming off just, by the way, they absolutely murdered UCLA. That score was a lot closer than the game looked. Um, who shows up? Is this Stanford uh, getting wrecked by K-State? Or is this Stanford um, that beat Oregon? Who's to say? This is also a possible Pac-12 championship preview. Maybe? Shrug? Who's to say? Anyways, Saturday noon. Um, Crappy and our special guest are going to talk about this game, but I have to say this as I am required to do so by uh, the federal, state, and local law. We have uh, Oklahoma playing Texas in the wed wibble wibble we. Uh, I'm required by law to say that. That is all I will say. Back to small number, big name team land with Crappy and our guest. Um, so just that's the noon slate. Um, do not perceive. Uh, any other games, Arkansas or Ole Miss, I hope the two of them can have something fun because they both got the brakes beat off of them last week. But I got to slide down to 3.30. And it pains me to do this, but um, <clears throat> UConn at UMass. Now, you may be wondering, again, why am I talking about UConn football? They're very bad, and you'd be right. However, UConn versus Vandy was kind of a fun game. And I didn't know that we could find a game featuring two trash teams again this year. And yet, the college football gods provide and give us UConn at UMass. I would like you to know that this game is on NESN. And you may be saying, AJ, you said ESPN funny. No, no. This is NESN. This is like Fox Sports Boston. Okay? Just... You don't have this channel. I guarantee you don't because you don't live anywhere near the Northeast. Otherwise, you'd care more about college football. And so... Uh, you may need to go to nefarious means on the internet to find this game, but you can do that. Maybe I will. Uh, also at 3.30, a much better game on a much larger network, Boise at BYU. Um, Boise is fine-ish, um, but they're not good. This is, this is not the normal Boise State dominant team. BYU is an absolute monster right now. I honestly thought they would take a step back um, against... Um, it, you know, this year because Zach Wilson was gone, they lost uh, a couple of their playmakers. They lost some people from their defense, but they've been just as good as they were last year, if not better. Um, so keep an eye on that game at 4 p.m. Oregon State at Washington State. Let's go Beavs! For the first time ever, the Oregon State Beavers have first place in the Pac-12 North. 
this year is the best. Um, Wazoo's bad. Nick Rolovich is probably going to get fired at the end of the year for both on-field and off-field reasons. Um, Oregon State looks great. Jonathan Smith and that team is doing a fantastic job. I cannot wait for the Civil War at the end of the year. 7 p.m., TCU at Texas Tech. Maybe, maybe pointsy? Hard to say. Texas Tech is 4-1. and one. Could maybe go 5-1 and one here. Uh, TCU doesn't have an offense. Um, Gary Patterson might need to hang it up. It, like it's over, Gary. You can you can sweat you can sweat through your shirts at home. Please do that. Also at seven p.m. in a probably better game, Wyoming at Air Force. Uh, Mountain West football stand up. This is a great battle between two. Uh, Wyoming's four zero. Air Force is, I believe, three and one, three and two, something like that. Um, my scrolling is terrible. Four and one. Great job, Air Force. Um, they are both very good teams. Uh, Air Force is obviously the home team, and they are getting they are favored by six. Um, Wyoming did not do themselves any favors by barely escaping UConn. Um, so this could be fun. This should be a good game. Check this out. Uh, also, just put your eyes on option football from time to time and understand how you can win a game by not throwing passes. At 8 p.m., on Fox, we have Utah at USC. Let's play a game. Which USC will show up for this game? Is it the one that got bodied by Oregon State and Stanford? Or is it the one that handled Wazoo and Colorado without issue? Which could it be? By the way, if you take a look at USC's schedule, they're awful in the Coliseum. And they're really good on the road. This game's at home. Utah might look amazing on national television, and USC's going to look like they've got egg on their face again. But who knows? Who knows what could happen here? At 9 p.m., New Mexico at San Diego State. Um, SDSU, first time getting ranked in a little bit here. They are number 25. Um, so good job to them for getting ranked. Uh, don't lose a dumb game. Also, weirdly, uh, San Diego State is punting at an incredible rate. I don't know why. I mean, Brady Hoke is their coach, so this checks out a little bit. But San Diego State is punting at a prodigious rate along with other incredibly bad teams, and San Diego State is very good. I don't understand why this is happening. Uh, also at 9 p.m., Memphis at Tulsa. Tulsa, who gave Ohio State some fun, is favored by 3.5. They are 1-4. and four. They are not good. Um, but they're somehow favored by three and a half here. I don't know why. Uh, and uh, in the 1030 slot, the late slate this week, kind of rough. Uh, I guess what the football gods are saying is go to bed, AJ. I watched the end of Fresno State, Hawaii, and um, my beloved Rainbow Warriors got a W against Fresno State. Jake Hayner got picked off at the at, as regulation ended. Um, but good job, Hawaii. You're off this week, um, and you can go... Uh, do those sorts of things. Uh, by the way, in the 1030 slot, do not watch Arizona football. I, I'm begging you, do not do that. That's bad for your heart. Um, it will set off asthma. Pretty sure it gives you allergies. Don't watch Arizona football. What you should do is watch Nevada because Nevada is quarterbacked by Carson Strong. Carson Strong is going to be an NFL quarterback next year, um, and he's playing a very bad New Mexico State team, so you might get to watch this kid ball out on national television. So um, CBSN, Network of Champions, watch that game. Um, again, as I've said the past few weeks, as I will continue to say, uh, enjoy the whole hog. Look for the stupid. Look for a score that doesn't seem right. Like if for whatever reason, I don't know, Syracuse is up by two touchdowns on Wake Forest at 3.30, you should just turn that game on and watch it. Just do that. You don't have to just watch the little number big name team games. You can watch the kind of little number um, stupid team names. Like Wake Forest is ranked 19th this year. That should tell you everything you need to know about the ACC. Uh, I am AJ, uh, back to crappy, and our special guest will see you out there. Oh, uh, thank you, AJ. For we really appreciate that as we always do. AJ, what'd you think? You did great, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did. I, 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 um, I, I, I thought I, I toyed with the idea of of making Boise BYU one of the one of the main games this year. And it's just, if, if Boise had been a little bit better, um, I, 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 I we would have we would have been talking about the game, that game in depth, um. But man, that your your point about BYU and and there really hasn't been a drop off, and I know they they've been dealing with injuries at quarterback, but 
they've they've looked so good this year so far, right? Yeah, a lot of that comes back to uh, Tyler Allgaier, who's their running back. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been fantastic. They returned a good bit of the receiving core too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, the quarterback who stepped in came in with weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kalani Sataki has recruited fairly well. Um, mm-hmm. By the way, if you haven't uh, looked into how BYU has to recruit, it's rough. Oh my God. <laughs> you gotta I can't recruit imagine. Mormons, man. You got to recruit Mormons. That's not, it's like, imagine, okay, you are already a school that's generally in the middle of nowhere. You're in Provo, Utah. Yes, you are. Now, let's go ahead. If you're, and if you're a skier, added, if you're a skier, that's awesome. I'm going. Right. Yes. So we don't, we don't play football. On, we don't play football on skis. No. Olympic event though. Um, and so you have this, you, you have to then go, you then get the curveball of having to recruit a specific Mormon religion. Like that's really hard. And then you then have to go find linemen and your players of various sizes from various backgrounds, Mm -hmm. additionally hard. So I would say the BYU's recruiting is possibly one of the hardest out there. Impossible. Impossible. Um, And yet, and and, and they, they do it every year. (laughs) Also shout out to uh, the, uh, the church of Latter-day Saints for bankrolling a good bit of this if you've seen there's a there's actually i think it's their it's their kicker or their punter who's on instagram or tiktok i don't know and he does videos in the byu locker room the crap looks like a spaceship man it's wild uh also shout well, out to yeah, the okay. uh, who was there's a byu booster who runs a uh i want to say it's a protein bar company okay in Provo. Just, okay and he signed uh walk-ons as employees and oh, is basically awesome. just paying their tuition yeah. Which, which you can do. Yeah, that's um, you can do now. Is name, is name, amazing. Is his name Romney? Is, is that by no. chance? Okay, that's uh, that's one of their star receivers. That's Gunnar Romney. Well, and there's and but there uh, there was another Romney who who played quarterback for at least a game. Uh, yes. it was just, it was, it's Gunner's it. Gunner's brother, right? No. Yes. No. Different. No. Different I remember Romney. we Carl, Carl and I did this last year, and I know there there are a couple Romneys who are like distant relatives of Mitt yes. and then there was another Romney who was not related at all which I right. I don't believe yeah there's just a massive Romney family that, it's like the Shipleys at Texas <laughs> they just okay. they just okay. grow them on trees and then just put them into football fields okay. that's how it works yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure that works they have some sort of like pod system I don't know but uh yeah BYU is doing very very well um, and by the way, you should absolutely watch them because they're usually on at 1030 at night. Just let, just let Kalani Sataki's big head that's, tuck you into bed. That's why I've seen them because they're, they're playing on Thursday nights or Friday nights or something like that. I'm like, oh, sweet football. And then I get sucked into watching BYU and, and they, man, they look great. They really do. Uh, big red bears reports as we delve once again into the Ivy league. Unfortunately, uh, my my Cornell Big Red are zero and three after uh, after the battle of the Nels at, at Bucknell last week. Um, interesting, they they, they started uh, they made a change at quarterback and started a kid. I think it was a sophomore. Um, and, and initially, the offense looked really good, but uh, you know he, he he played like a sophomore. I don't remember the kid's name. Um, couldn't really get things going. They they switched back to the senior towards the end of the game. Um, and I think it just it, it by that point it it, uh, it midway through the fourth quarter it felt like a little bit too late. Um, I want to uh, I want to highlight Drew Powell, number thirty in your program, number one in your heart. Uh, he made progress as well because he um, he he advanced into uh, the, the regular offense as a blocker on on Cornell's uh, a, a short yardage package. Unfortunately, there were no short yardage situations for Cornell. I'm not sure what that. What is that? I guess that says something about the offense. Um, still, I mean, they still, were they were gaining short yardage because they had twenty three rushing attempts for thirty four yards. So a lot of yeah. short yardage being gained. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. I'm hoping. I mean, it, this it, it feels like kind of a rough season coming, and and I'm hoping at some point that 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 will translate into uh, in, in, into um, uh, playing time for my nephew. Um, but he's also on the field for special teams as he has been all season. Up next, uh, I do want to. I do want to. Yes. I do want to point out that Please Cornell's do. logo is amazing because it mm-hmm. looks like this. It looks like a bear who's very mad that you is, that you said something mad about the sea, like it's holding yeah. the sea in some sort of like hug. And I asked about that, and, and 
the bear apparently exists as a mascot only like in that logo. They're not, they are not the Cornell bears. I, I tried that no. and, and was rebuked. Large, large scarlet over there. Um, but so, so big red. Uh, uh, next up um, at uh, 3 0 Harvard on Saturday, I think, I believe at 1 p.m. Um, that th- feels kind of ouchy. Do you, do you have any further thoughts about uh, Ivy League football this week? Um, Harvard. Harvard is dominating everybody they've played so far this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, they really um, have been. And so this 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 might go well for our um, uh, our enormous crayons. Um, <laughs> very large scarlet over there, and it's this this might be real bad. I'm sorry, Big Red. Listen, I hope I, Big it, Red comes <laughs> out with a win. But you, you listen, you don't go into the in the unfriendly unfriendly. Uh, confines of Cambridge, Massachusetts, and just come out with a W like it's nothing. You don't just no. walk into Mordor. No. no, so it's it's don't it's, do that. Okay, okay. Um, we're gonna get to our feature games right now, and we start with one that um that AJ mentioned in his report. Um, and AJ, I wanted to uh, to stress to you exactly why we brought this up. This is a, a noon Saturday. Uh, mm-hmm. the wed. I, I don't know if I can do. I, I, I can get deep enough to do the wed wibble wibble we. Web wibble wibble we. Um, I can speak. I'm trying to get like down far enough oh, into the actual it's Elmer, Elmer, Elmer Fudd territory. And I'm, I'm wed not wibble, wed wibble wibble we. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, this, of course, is number six Oklahoma uh, against number 21 Texas on a, a ostensibly neutral field in Dallas. Um, the Sooners are favored by three and a half points. The over under. Um, I decided to start including including over unders in these intro things and and maybe. Maybe, should we call that like the AJ Fund Index instead? The yes. higher the number. I mean, listen, listen, gambling's legal now. We don't have to pretend like it's not. And yeah, I know. I, but but over, under, just, over under is there. The, but that yes, that does set the fun index. Okay. Fun index on this game very high because you have a very small spread. We're gonna very you and I over under. You and I are gonna talk this week about what the AJ Fund Index might be. And and yeah. and with the goal of of having that established by by next week's show, here's some we'll history. We won't do that, but yes, nah, we'll, we'll do it. here's our history. Here, history, history. 2017, uh, 29, 24, Oklahoma. 2018, 48, 45, Texas. Uh, 20 the, 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 the next year, whatever the next year is. Uh, 39, 27. The next year, 34, 27. Last year, holy crap! Four overtimes, fifty-three to forty-five. This is a this is a big school game that is actually right in your wheelhouse. Because if, if you're looking for the stupid, this is the, the, this yes. is the game. This is the game, right? Yes. What do you think? This what do you game. Think? This game is always stupid. Mm-hmm. It's great and stupid mm-hmm. um, because it never, for the last since like 2013. Mm-hmm. It's rarely gone terribly well for the higher ranked team. Yes. Right. This game has been close every year Mm -hmm. and it, it, somebody's getting put under pressure. It's usually Oklahoma where it's Mm -hmm. like Oklahoma's coming in. They came in ranked uh, 11th, 20th, 10th, 12th, 7th, 5th, and 6th Mm -hmm. since 2013. But uh, unranked last year when they won. Unranked unranked last year mm-hmm. when they won. Yeah. So this game has this game has top stupid potential. Mm-hmm. It's going to get pointsy as heck. Mm-hmm. Uh Texas put up 70 on Texas Tech a few weeks ago. Oklahoma mm-hmm. still has Spencer Rattler, although Spencer Rattler looking <sighs> rattled. Uh-huh. Um, to the point where the uh during the West Virginia game the student section was ch- was chanting that they wanted no, the backup, which is oh, a savage man. maneuver. Listen. Yeah. Listen. Uh, this is just for me and crappy. We're grown adults. We've yes. been here before. We've seen these sorts of things before. Yes, we have. If you're a fan of a professional football team and you chant for the backup, no big deal. Nah, do it. If you're in the student section and you're chanting for the backup, you got to see the co- the starter in class that week. Yes. Like you got to go to biochem yeah. with, with Spencer Rattler. Like, oh, hey, there's Spencer Rattler walking across the quad. Yes. Right. Yes, there he he's going to be, he's going to, he's going to have a type, he's going to feel a type of way because you were probably in the crowd and he can't pick out whether you were saying, no, keep him in. He can't <laughs> pick that out. So you got to, you got to like not do that. Don't be a jerk, I guess is what I'm saying. Save that for the Dallas Cowboys kids. Game. Save that for the pro teams, man. The pro the pro guys get paid a lot of money yep. 
to go do those sorts of things. So yes, this game has always maximum stupid potential. I believe this game is a big new. No, no, no. How did Fox not get this? <laughs> this is an ABC because they're, game? They're, they're showing Ohio State and Maryland. What? Well, oh, well, what I'm not, I'm just here. Let me quick sidebar. That's it. the over under on that game is 71, but the spread is 21 in favor of Ohio State. That's gross. that's gross. They're gonna have they're gonna have Gus Johnson yelling about Ohio State touchdowns when they could have him yelling about the maximum stupidity. He's gonna blow a blood vessel in his forehead. And most AJ yelling most, about Red River rivalry. Most weeks, I would argue with you about that. This week, no. He, he, he should be no. in Dallas. He should be in no, Dallas. No, I want him losing his mind about Spencer Rattler. Yes. I want that. I don't want him yelling like, CJ Stroud, slightly <laughs> off the mark. I don't need that. No one wants that. I don't want to get him to sh- slightly off the mark, but okay. No, but like I need Gus Johnson losing his mind about like, because all of these games have come down to, was that eight points? Yeah. Seven points, yeah, 12 yeah. points, they, they, they're three all big. points, five points. They score points, like crazy points, and they're points. tight. Yes. Right. These are tight games. You want Gus Johnson on the tight game. You do not want sure. Gus Johnson on the like three touchdown spread game. Sorry, everybody. Um, this, by the way, there's some article out there that I read about how they actually pay, how the networks get the games. Mm-hmm. And somewhere along the line, it was like there's like week, week by week. ABC gets like first pick or ESPN yes. get ESPN Disney gets first pick Fox gets first pick other weeks um, CBS can flex in one SEC game to be a night game which they're mm-hmm. doing this week for some stupid reason yeah. um, I mean, that's, congratulations that's, Texas a and you get murdered <laughs> on national TV this time Network that's, people that's, get to watch this death that's why we got Ohio State Akron in prime time um, because that well, that was the, the Big Ten Network's only shot to get an Ohio State night game, and they and they and they said, sure. yeah, that's that's what we want. And everyone in Columbus sure. is going, what? Playing Akron under the lights, like <laughs> we're not going to pay the electric bill for this. Okay, game. <laughs> okay, we're, we're 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 way 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 off course. What do you think about about the wed with a rival we in twenty twenty one? I, you know, Oklahoma's looked shaky as heck all yeah. year. Yeah. They have yet to put a game out there where I'm like, oh, yeah, Oklahoma's back. Mm-hmm. The only game they looked sh- shaky against, a, as we've seen since, uh, not terribly good Tulane. Mm-hmm. They blew out Western Carolina, yes. whatever. Mm-hmm. You only beat Nebraska by five. Mm-hmm. You only beat Western, you only beat West Virginia by three. Almost lost. You, it took you. You yeah. almost lost to K State last week. Like yeah. these games are not. The, the Oklahoma is shaky, and mm-hmm. Texas is since their uh, who did they? I think it was week two. Yeah, week two when they got whomped by Arkansas. The literal beginning of whomp. Um, yeah. the Oak, t- Texas has looked relatively good, although they got they got uh, they got shaken up pretty good last week by TCU. Mm-hmm. This could go either way. Mm-hmm. I think the rankings are based on, you know, you're coming in with preseason inertia yep. versus actual rankings. I think Oklahoma should be in the mid teens to maybe upper twenties. Mm-hmm. They, they've not looked terribly good. They're obviously five and zero, and it's hard to rank a five and zero team below a four and one team, but Oklahoma has not looked good. Um, Texas also hasn't looked terribly good. So this game should be maximum stupid. And uh, I see Texas getting the win. Nice. Okay. Um, I, I don't need to go over what Oklahoma has done or not done or how they look because you, you covered that thoroughly. Um, I, I think, you know, Sark had a stumble uh, early in the season when he, he started a freshman at quarterback. I don't remember the kid's name. Went back to Casey Thompson. Um, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it, it is far from flawless, uh, but, but that seems to have settled everybody down, particularly on offense. Um, they have looked... Unlike Oklahoma, they they have looked better incrementally, uh, d- d- pr- pretty much through the season. Once once Thompson was the the, the full time starter, um, so you know, I look at this and in one program is like, what in the hell is going on over there? And the other, you look at and think, mm, okay, it's coming. It, it's it's it it seems to be getting better. Um, and I think that's the pick. That's that's uh, that's how you look at this and think, okay, Texas is gonna is gonna win this one. 
Uh, next up, which also, now means which, but which now means that Oklahoma is going to win. So I, probably, there's probably that. we. I don't. We don't have an Oklahoma postulate. Uh, so maybe I, who knows how that's going to go. Uh, also at noon on Saturday, the uh, the thank you for participating bowl. Um, we have number thirteen Arkansas at number seventeen Ole Miss. Um, the, the Rebels are favored by six. The over under is a healthy sixty six and a half points as of as of Tuesday afternoon. Um, these of course are the both both of the teams that. Uh, lost the the the, uh, the big matchups uh, in the SEC last week, um, so it's kind of fun that they get to kind of settle. Who's the best second tier team in the SEC this or, or in the, uh, So I, I don't know what's going to happen with this one. Um, AJ, what do you think? Um, Arkansas has a very very good defense. John Ridgeway yes. is their nose tackle, and he just eats linemen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he could not eat linemen last week because uh, Georgia has a also very good offensive line. Yeah. Um, Matt Corral is somebody you need to put your eyes on. Yes. On a regular basis, we talked Dude, about that last week. Yeah. He is incredibly fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lane has an absolute death machine for an offense, dun, uh, dun, even against dun, the, dun, 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 dun. Uh, don't, uh, by the way, YouTube, don't do anything with that. Um, yeah, so, that was nothing. That was nothing. No, it was nothing. No, just some, just some sounds we're making with our voices. Um, I could see, I mean, this game could go either way. I, I think Arkansas has enough of an offense mm-hmm. and a good enough defense to slow Ole Miss down. Mm-hmm. You just have to slow them down. You're not yeah. stopping them. You Speed have bumps. to slow them down enough Speed that bumps. your offense can get on the field because Ole yeah. Miss's defense is built to just shut up and get off the field. Right. It's a very weird way of playing defense where they're like, we're here. Right. We'll throw a hand up from time to time, but they're meant to get off of the field yeah. so that the offense can get back onto it. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I see Arkansas doing a little bit of um, sit on their chest mm-hmm. and, okay. and wait uh, mm-hmm. for the end of the game. Uh, I see Arkansas winning this game. Okay. Um, I, I, I agree. Uh, as we learned last week, uh, these two programs, uh, man, uh, they, they, they both had great starts. Uh it, Ole Miss is is crazy to watch. Um, I, it, they're 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 both very good. Uh, they're they're not Alabama or Georgia good as we found out. But um, I think this comes down to a, a, a classic offense versus defense matchup. Um, and, and and the Arkansas defense, uh, it, it, regardless of what happened last weekend, they they are they are better than they looked then. Um, and I think uh, you know a couple speed bumps. Enough to slow down Ole Miss. Uh, I, I think that that's uh, Arkansas is the pick for this one. Uh, one final game, the kind of game that AJ loves above all others. 4 p.m. Saturday, number four, Penn State at number three, Iowa. I was favored by a point and a half. The over-under is a generous 41 points. Um, I'm not even going to try to do an intro of this one. I just, I just want to jump in and, and hear what AJ thinks to, to get to, to what this, this might be like the most big 10 matchup possible. Oh God. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'll just be stop. really honest. Just, just stop right there. Just stop right there. Just, That's all oh we need. God. That's all we need. I, I'm going to watch Wake Forest Syracuse. Like um, okay. this, this, this game is one of those, like, this is a heavyweight fight. Yes. Like if you ever watch heavyweight boxing, mm. they're throwing not, like not for four, many years, not for many years, no, but yes, not for a while, but it, like heavyweight boxing matches, they're throwing like five, six punches around. Yeah. Like, they, like you got to move a lot of muscle. You got to move a lot of body weight to get that thing loaded up and let go. Right. So this game is just going to be a, like a heavyweight boxing match yes. versus like uh, any sort of offensive struggle that you would have where it's, you know, very cruiserweight, whole lot of punches, a whole lot of speed. It's based on speed. This mm-hmm. is based on how much power can we generate? Mm-hmm. Um, neither team has a terribly good quarterback. Sean Clifford is fine, right? He's not, I'm not expecting Sean Clifford to go off for 500 yards. No, I'm expecting a tidy 250 from Sean Clifford, oh. right? I don't even know who the quarterback is for Iowa. I, I don't even, even know. Does it not matter? Because like, they're handing not. the ball to Tyler. They're handing the ball to Tyler Goods. Yeah. Um, I mean, they can. I think Iowa is a very good team. They have. They, they both have just monster defenses. 
So yeah, this game is going to end with two prime numbers, none of them terribly high. Uh, hammer the under. This is a 15, this is a 17-15 sort of game. Um, all field goals somehow. And then you can just, if you listen, you should just wear like a flannel, a flannel scarf and some sort of like overcoat with a hat while you're watching this game because you need to dress up like the time that both of these offenses will be having, which is like uh, a, a fedora at best. Fedora, a fedora of some sort. Uh, yeah. You should this wear 1939. You should wear 1939 tie. football. Yeah, um, and you can smoke in the stands if that's if that's a thing for you. So that's um, yes. yes, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> uh, Spencer go Petras, ahead. by the way, is Spencer Petras. Uh, okay, let's go see what Spencer's been up to. I I, I have his stats up here. I'm going to let you take a look. I don't know. Is, <laughs> this, is this still the Deadhead Kid? I don't because he's from San Rafael. He's a leading. He's a. Uh, uh, he is. I'm, he's. He's thrown for 943 yards this year. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go look at a different quarterback here. Hold on. Let me go take one quick look. I think Spencer. Uh, we, I think we talked about Spencer last year because um, as when he was installed as the, the starting quarterback, uh, he he talked about the fact that he was like the only deadhead on on the entire Iowa campus, not just the football team. Um, which of course that's a, there's a soft spot in my heart for that. Um, but, uh, I'm going to let you take a look. Um, yeah, he's, I, he is in, he's below Grayson McCall at coastal Carolina, coastal Carolina runs a two back option set. So, which, which is nuts, which is just like a mind blowing <laughs> offense. Um, yes. and we will, and we will get to talk about, we will get to talk about them. Um, I, but, uh, as far as this game goes, um, I, I'm, I'm more familiar with Penn State, Big Ten East. We play them every year. There's a there's a Penn State fan whose name is on the show who uh, AJ is subbing for right now. Um, they are vastly improved uh, over last year, particularly you know the obviously the the, the start that they had uh, in 2020 was just ridiculous. Defense is lights out. Uh, I've said this several times. Uh, I'm I'm impressed with Sean Clifford. Uh, he is he's. Uh, uh, things have changed in the offense. So he, the pressure is kind of off him a little bit. He's making better decisions. Um, he's, he's not an elite quarterback, um, but he can be very, very good. He can scramble. Um, I, I, the, the problem is that, that, that there are still kind of weaknesses. Uh, Penn State doesn't run the ball very well. Um, no. they, don't protect no, the, they don't protect the, port, the quarterback for as, as well as they should. Uh, Clifford, I, I, Clifford can scramble, but that doesn't mean he, he should be all the time. Um, um, Sean Clifford scrambles, by the way, put that yeah. on a shirt, like some sort of breakfast. That should be a breakfast item. Sean Clifford scrambles. Um, what would be in a Sean, Sean Clifford scramble? Um, hmm. Dirt. So Sean Clifford scrambles uh, are th oh, the man. third leading rusher for Penn State right now. Yeah, yeah. He's and got 100. And by the way, that's only 50 yards behind the leading rusher. And that's, no and that's team. I, I guarantee that is that is that is light years ahead of what happened last year because I I, I, uh, I I am sure he was a leading rusher at some point during the season last year. But uh, uh, Sean Sean Clifford last year was a hundred yards off the leading rusher for the season. Okay, so. yeah, there you go, there you go. Um, if Iowa can make that Penn State's offense one dimensional, and, and and I think they probably can. I'm 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 treading water. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm treading gently here because because of Carla. Um, but I I mean, if that happens, if they try, if they take away the pass and and they contain Sean Clifford, uh, that's gonna be tough for Penn State. Um, maybe if this was, I, I would think about this differently if 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 they were in State College, um, but. I, 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 I wins this and, and yeah. uh, the, what I have in my notes uh, is something in the neighborhood of 1710. So you and I are probably, <laughs> yeah, this is a 17, 15, 17, 10 yeah, game. Exactly. I also have Iowa. I, I realized that I never actually said who was going to win. I also have Iowa winning. Penn state does not run the ball. No, they just, and, they and, try, at least they try. And they got it. They, they haven't gotta. gotten anywhere. Yeah. And it's, that's not good. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Iowa can bottle up Sean Clifford, uh, both in the run game and in the passing game, mm -hmm. and they don't have anybody else to go to. Uh, Jahan Dotson is awesome yes. and can make incredible catches, Yes, but he's not a he, tailback. 
hand and tailback. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I see this. And by the way, because this game is a Kinnick, that's where dreams go to die. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, Penn State, but this is this is I, how this ends. I agree. Um, good luck to Iowa in the Rose Bowl, whomping the crap out of whatever Pac-12 team ends up in Pasadena. Go, go beat Oregon. I'd be happy to see that. Uh, boys and girls, you can hear the Carly and Crappy Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google, Stitcher, TuneIn, and a variety of other podcasting hosts. Uh, you can watch us on YouTube or the show's Facebook page. If you like us, please subscribe, rate, and review. If you don't, Mind your own damn business uh, and be sure to come back next week when you can see exactly how wrong we were. And by we, I mean me and AJ, who will be back That's true. next week. AJ, do you have a, a final thought? Um, just keep your eye out for realignment in the G5. There's some very fun rumors out there right now that mm-hmm. could make very fun football matchups going forward. Uh, I'm very excited to see that uh, you should... Uh, go take a look at uh, was the Conference USA and Sun Belt realignment. Very excited about that. Hmm. Are, are, I mean, anything in particular that you're that you're looking for that you would you would be especially stoked to see? One of the rumors has Marshall going to the Sun Belt, which means you get a regular Marshall App State game. Okay, and that makes me happy. Yes. Right? That's Marshall Coastal, Marshall App State, Marshall Georgia Southern. There's a lot of uh, good potential football matchups there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also some rumors about, uh, and what that would also do is get Marshall out of CUSO, which means that they don't have, they yes. only have to travel to Texas once mm-hmm. and has to go play the meep meep UTSA Roadrunners. <laughs> um, otherwise, they have to go to Texas like three times a year. And that's a lot of yeah. money. So that's, that's um, a lot of money. That's a lot of travel. Yeah. It's very interesting thinking about the the low when you think of the lower levels and see the lower levels, how geographically that needs to make more sense than maybe the bigger conferences. And it's mm-hmm. actually why the Mac has been as successful as it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. The Mac has done a nice job of sort of containing its geographic area. It's, it's easy when we're talking about uh, conference realignment. Um, you know, it's just like, OK, Big Ten West. Sure. Why not extend that to Colorado or Kansas or both? Um, and and some of that has to do with the money that Big Ten has versus the money that the MAC has. But um, the MAC has a very very tight footprint um, and has kept it that way largely. I, there was a weird season where Temple was a football member for some reason. I'm not sure why that ever happened. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just throwing up in my mouth thinking about Illinois yeah. Kansas football games. Sorry regular Illinois Kansas let's let's talk about games. Illinois Kansas basketball games because that's way sure. more interesting <laughs> sure but Illinois uh, Kansas football also has to exist for that to happen but oh man can um what would oh man what would happen who is the uh uh, uh round, who was the who was the the um larger head coach at Kansas a couple Mark Mangino ago. Mark Mangino mm-hmm. What if there was um, there was a game, Kansas Illinois, Mangino, uh, and and um, oh, I'm blanking on the coach's name at Illinois. What I Bert, why can't uh, Bert, Bert? What Bert versus Bert? Bert, Bert versus ruined. Mark. Bert versus Mark. Uh huh. Um, also, it, it could be the, yeah, like I a would, sumo wrestling kind of thing. I would I would love that. Also. Yes. We need to talk about the fact, we, and we're not talking enough about this fact. Mark Mangino from, I don't know, Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Oh no, I did know that. Yes, yes, I, I did know he was a Western Western PA guy. Um, as as are you know, like fifty percent of the college football coaches, uh, head coaches and assistant coaches out there. Uh, and he's and he's gone too. Mm-hmm. I can't find him. Wikipedia is the, Wikipedia has his last coaching gig as the. Offensive coordinator and tight ends coach at Iowa State from 2014 to 2015. Hmm. That's interesting. Gone. Wow. Okay. Here, to, can I give you homework? Can I give you homework for next week? Uh, sure. Find find out what happened to Mark Mangino. I'm sure. I'm I'm. Curious oh, he's. Though. Oh no no never mind. He's retired. Oh, wait. In Naples, found it. In Naples, Florida. In Naples, Florida, he's retired with wow. his wife Mary Jane. Mary Jane Mangino. I what a name, a, by the way, Mary Jane Mangino. That's nice. That's I wonder if he's a, a neighbor of my sister's. Hmm. Possibly. Okay. Now I have uh, also. Now I have I homework. See, I, I, see, I see Kansas. I see Kansas blogs asking for the return of Mark Mangino. 
<laughs> I'm here for it. Why the, Lance why the Leipold's doing a great Lance Leipold's doing a great job. Keep why going, Lance. Hell, why the hell not? My my final thought, uh, and, and AJ brought this up earlier. Um, I am I am seeing in person college football again on Saturday, Ohio State hosting Maryland. Um, I'm feeling better about Ohio State's defense. I'm feeling better about facing Maryland's offense, especially after last last week. They were not they were not good against Iowa. They got thumped. Uh, Ohio State's 21 point favorite. And as AJ mentioned, the, 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 the over under is 71 points, which I think is the the highest one, the highest one that we've uh, covered this week. Um, yes. So a little angsty, but perhaps not as angsty as I would have anticipated a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, and I'm sure I will talk about my experience uh, when I am back and AJ is back next mm-hmm. week. AJ, thank you very much for, for uh, jumping in when um, my organizational inabilities became so readily apparent this morning. <laughs> No, you're fine. I'm terrible at reading calendars as well. And there's been a number of times it's, in the last like two months where I go, oh, crap, I got to do that thing. Crap. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, a lot, but... guest host. Sure. I need a guest host. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm, and I'm, the, I'm the spot uncle. It's fine. I appreciate it. I, I really do. Uh, and I promise you next week. It, it is it is all G5. Maybe it's mostly. not. Mostly. It's not. Mostly. We'll talk about other things. I do want to roll out this anxiety grenade. Ohio State yes. at Nebraska. Ohio State at Nebraska. That has that has spice potential. Nebraska has looked demonstrably better in the last like three weeks. It has, and I don't know how to feel about that. And there was I mean, there was a, there was a uh, not there was a night game several years ago, uh, more than several years ago. Um, Braxton Miller was the quarterback, and Ohio State just blew the doors off the corn huskers in the first half and we were at a thing um at at uh at uh, uh the berg's eye view downstairs bar yes and nebraska came back and won the game in the second half and i'm i'm that's that is still that's still just a, it's a kernel in the back of my head right here it's i still remember so yeah thank you oh Oh God! Next week, sorry, just to throw this out there. Next week, Yale at, at UConn. I will be covering that game. Please do. Bye. I mean, more, more. The more Ivy League content, the better. Listen, AJ, I appreciate the help. Thank you. Cheers to you, my friend, and Cheers. everybody. Thank you for watching. You will see me and him and yeah. him back here next week. Enjoy the games this weekend, everyone. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.